Hi, my name is Blair Brown, and today I'm gonna to be taking you through your fundamental workout that's gonna be focused on hip mobility. For today's workout, all you'll need is a yoga mat or a nice comfortable place to sit. It's really important as we work through some more advanced ranges of motion for the hip that you listen to your body. I'm gonna provide modifications along the way, but I really want you to listen to what your range is and I want this workout to feel good for you and in order to get the most amount of benefit from it, it's not about end range stretches and pushing through discomfort, it's about moving where your body's comfortable. So let's get started. We're gonna come down to a seated position. You're gonna have one leg crossed in front of the other, bottom leg's gonna be bent. You're gonna come down onto your elbow and you're gonna kick that leg out to the side. Now you have two options here. You can then return back up to a seated position and then lower down with control and kick out, or you can stay down on this elbow and just move through the hip. So we're gonna start with just some dynamic warm up with this exercise. So we're gonna do 10 on each side. Let's get started. So coming down with control, engaging through the core as you kick that leg out and back up to start, that's one. And extending for two. Notice my hips are nice and stacked and back. We're working on some extension, rotation, and a little bit of strength and stability as well. This is number three. I love starting with dynamic warm-ups, especially for the hips. It gives the muscles a chance to warm up, to become much more pliable and loose, to tolerate some of the more end range stretching that we're gonna do in just a little bit. You've got five more, this is one. And up, remember that you can just stay here and cross. We've got two more. This is one. Top hand can be wherever is comfortable for you. And two. All right, let's switch to the other side. So bottom leg's bent, top leg is nice and bent in front of you. So you're kind of at this 90, 90 degree angle. You're gonna lower down onto one elbow, kicking the leg out nice and straight and transitioning back up for one. Now, since I'm lowering down onto the elbow, I'm using my core to also draw back up. I'm not pushing with my upper body. This is number three. And four. Remember that you have that option just to stay here for five and cross. And if your cross doesn't come all the way back up, maybe it's here. That's great. That's exactly where you should be. That's what your body's telling you. Let's do two more. So extending out, crossing up for this last and final rep and down. Awesome. All right, so for this next exercise, you're gonna put, position your legs in a 90-90 position here. If this being upright is a little too much crease at the hip for you, you can come back down onto your hands, elbows nice and relaxed to help open up through the hips. What we're gonna do is we're gonna swivel the knees to center and back over to the other side and then back up and over. So creating kind of like a windshield wiper effect. Now, if you feel like you have enough motion and stability, you can come up off your hands transition and switch. We're gonna do five each side, so let's get started. So knees come up, move through center, switch for one. Knees come up, move over for two. Knees come up, move over three. It's okay to use your arms to help stabilize your upper body and your core as you transition, ooh, that's tight, through the center. We've got two more each side. This is one. And I'm kind of cheating. I've got a nice sticky mat that's helping holding me still. So you might find if you move around a little, that's okay. Let's do one more. Awesome. Okay. We're going to now move into our hip flexors and our inner thigh muscles a little bit, which are so important for any of those runners out there, skiers, and bikers, because at going for a long bike ride, you really use your hip flexors and your crouched. This is really gonna help loosen and open you up again. So we're gonna start in a nice half kneeling position with um, your hips nice and level. We're gonna start by just shifting your weight forward, extending through that back leg, nice neutral spine, 
back to center. Now your front leg is gonna transition off to a 45 degree angle, and you're gonna shift outward and forward and back. Let's do five on each side. So starting forward, shift, back to center, step out, shift. Upper body stays facing forward as you add that angle outward. This is two and two. You might find as you do more repetitions, you might start to be able to move a little deeper, shift your weight a little bit further. We've got two more each side. This is one. Make sure as you're hinging forward, you're not arching through your back. You're using your core to help protect your lower back. And last one. Okay, let's switch to the other side. So, bend your nice neutral hip position. Lunging forward so you feel that nice stretch through your hip flexor on that back leg. Then stepping out at the 45 degree angle and lunging forward. That's one. Coming forward and then out for two. Core's locked in place, shoulders up and back and out. Back to center, you're working a little stability and balance here. If you're feeling unstable, you could always have a coffee table, a chair nearby, ooh, or just have to regroup like me. Here we go, last one. And back and out. Okay, now we're gonna work through that same kind of angled position and add a little deeper stretch for the side body and glute. So you're gonna open your arms out kind of on this I don't even know how to describe it. So your top arms up, bottom arms down. You're gonna work on bringing that bottom hand to touch the floor towards that bent knee and slowly come back up. We wanna really try to keep our spine as neutral as we can. It is gonna bend a little bit, but I just don't want a whole lot of arching through your back. So let's do five on each side. So hinging as you reach and then back up. Feeling a great stretch in through that side body, that hip flexor as well as the glutes on the bent knee side. This is three and four. Last one, five. Okay, let's switch other side. So same hand position. I guess maybe I've figured it out. So hand that's closest to the bent knee is gonna face down, other arm's gonna reach up. You're gonna hinge, reaching that hand down towards the floor, towards the bent knee, and back up, that's one. And hinge for two. And hinge three. Move with control. It's all about pausing. Even though we're working on dynamic mobility, we don't wanna be really moving with a lack of control or with any sort of um, momentum. That can really throw things off for our muscles and our joints. All right, time has come to do a little more supported stretching. So you're gonna come down onto your side. Your bottom arm is gonna be your pillow. Your bottom knee is gonna be bent. Your top hand is gonna brace here in front. I wanna make sure your hips are nice and stacked. We're gonna do a bicycling motion. This is one of my favorite ways to work on some dynamic hamstring flexibility. The reason I love it so much is your spine stays in neutral, so it's very specific to your hamstrings. So what you're gonna do is draw your top knee up, extend the leg out, sweep back to center. Now, depending on your hamstring flexibility, your extension may be here. That's fine. It's where you are today that's important. So let's do five each direction. So drawing the knee up, extending, sweeping back for one. Up, extend, and sweep. I'm really using my top hand pressing into the mat to help my core maintain neutral positioning. The last thing we want is a sloppy upper body as we're really trying to do this complex mo movement through our lower half. Now let's reverse it so the leg's gonna sweep up and forward, knee's gonna bend in, leg's gonna extend, that's one. And sweeping up, bend, and extend for two. On that extension, it can be really tempting to really lose that core control and arch. We don't want that. We want the core to stay nice and tight. So notice my extension isn't all that large. All right, let's switch to the other side. Feels good to lay down after all that dynamic movement, huh? 
at least for me. All right, here we go, same form. So bottom arm's your pillow, bottom knee's bent, hips are stacked, top arm is bracing here to help control your torso and core. We're gonna start with drawing that top knee in, extending the leg out, and drawing back for one. Extend and sweep for two. Draw the knee in, extend, reach back three, knee comes up, extend for four, final one. And then we just have the reverse. You should feel nice and loose after this workout, sweeping the leg up, knee draws in, extend back. Sweep and extend. This is number three. And four, keep those hips nice and stacked. Use that top arm. Last one. Awesome work. Thanks so much for joining me today for this hip mobility fundamental workout. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Remember, change comes with commitment. Commit to these routines and you'll see the changes in the way your body feels and moves in not only your daily life, but the activities that you enjoy the most. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Never miss the latest videos from your doctor-designed fitness experts. Subscribe now.